Next up, we have Skin Elements, ASX code SKN, market cap around $13 million. We have with us the Executive Chairman, Peter Malone. The company is dedicated to designing and formulating natural, organic health and wellness products for the global market. Peter, thanks for your time. Over to you. Yeah, thanks very much, Tim. Essentially, uh, Skin Elements has spent 15 years developing a range of organic skincare products for the global market. Uh, it's a leading biotech in the very narrow, deep space in this area. And uh, if you give us the next slide, I'll go through the uh, program. We've seen the company awarded uh, number one sunscreen in America, which is one of our, our first project. We're developing the antimicrobial base, which is our technology base. Uh, we also, which was with the Environmental Working Group, and we proceed further with other awards, which come across a number of different places, including the, the likes of the uh, Washington Post, which is like a body and soul type of uh, group that awarded us their best product. We've also had cosmetic awards for the same type of uh, program. And recently, of course, they all get in Australia TGA uh, awards as passes in meeting certain standards. Next slide, please. The details started with Saleo Organics. It was the ability to build a natural organic sunscreen, safe, no chemicals. And that's what Skin Elms is about. It's a biotech company working in the organic sector, using organic ingredients to replace chemicals. And the chemicals, the toxicity varies across a number of products and foods in the skin and food space. And it's a big change that we see is now the conscious consumer is really a person that pays careful attention what they ingest or what they use in their body. And this is where we started our research and development of our product line. The four key areas we're focusing Sunscreens, which is a Saleo Organics brand. Uh, therapeutic goods, arthritis, eczema, psoriasis, issues like wounds and burns and muscle aches and pains. Developed a range of skincare products, therapeutic ones that deal with the issues coming from those type of ailments. And we're using papaya, papaya which is one of the most active products that does a lot of good value in curing those, immediately, giving immediate cures for some of those ailments. But our product differs in the sense that we've been able to put in 60% pour pour into a mix compared to somewhere between less than 10% by competitive products. Uh, more recently, the big launch of course, which is happening now is the super covered product. It's a natural, plant-based hospital grade disinfectant. It developed over the COVID period, of course, and it's just received TJ approvals, the highest rated product internationally. And uh, it gives us the capacity to disinfect homes, offices, spaces where we live in. And the fourth product on our radar is the cosmetic space, which is obviously moving very, very quickly into organic products. And this is our Elizabeth Jane range. Next slide, Pete, please. We see the products going global. We've had wide acceptance across the Australian market with the sunscreen, also in the US, Canada and Europe and the UK in more recent times. These products are all ready for launch essentially pre-COVID. And obviously with the retail closures that happened, we're now relaunching essentially this product line. And we also have a further launch happening at the moment, which is a super cover launch. And that is happening right here in Australia, which is currently at all IGA distribution points in Western Australia, which has just been secured. And it's been handled by our key distributor, Pacific Health Care. Next slide, please. Bit of detail about Saleo Organics. Essentially, if you look at the screen there and you're viewing it, you can see that all the traditional 
ingredients of sunscreens. None of those occur in our Soleil Organics product. In fact, the change is dramatic. The product is so strong that a one-year-old baby could ingest the sunscreen, the Soleil Organics sunscreen, there'd be no issues for the health of the child. Um, it's well regarded in heavy water use. The International Surfing Federation was the test market for the product. Uh, it stays on. It comes in a variety of tubes, as you can see there, whether they be the high-performance blue one in the front of the screen or whether the coconut variant or the lesser stickier product, which is the everyday light for wearing around the street, going to the foot of your cricket, or even the back of it, we bring on our new face lines, which we tinted as well as a baby line to follow. Very exciting program, extensive opportunity in the global market. It's a $3 billion market internationally, and Saleo is pitching to take on some of the major operators that have been chemical-based brands to date. Next slide, please. The second product in the arsenal of the company is the Papaya Actives Therapeutic Range. This is the banner product for people with eczema, particularly teenagers. I mean, it does not have any steroidal content in it. It does not change the hormonal structures of, of uh, particularly women, girls. Um, it doesn't have any downsides that traditional steroids have. It, having said that, it delivers all the benefits that you would expect from a sunscreen, sorry, from a um, therapeutic good like this. So in a practical sense, it's the best product for a new market opportunity. It also comes with partners in arthritis, psoriasis, and the other more general comments of wounds and burns and muscle aches and pains. Um, next slide, please. This is the skincare component of the Actives range. This is a more general product. It's dealt and brings the benefits of papaya into a general cream base, which is hyperallergenic, biodegradable, recycling packaging is all part of the company's mantra. And it also gives you things like shampoos, conditioners, and general products that we use every day, soaps, and uh, facial creams. This brings into the proposition for skin elements, the opportunity to have a full brand, the Papaya Actives brand, which picks up both segments, the therapeutic segment, and of course, the general skincare segment. Uh, next slide, please. Supercover, it's the best disinfectant disinfectant globally at the moment. It's got a very, very high rating as I just reported, but it also allows us to use it around humans in offices, in homes, in our car. You can spray the product. Um, it comes in various sizes. And I just, you know, at the end of the day, I've got one here. Um, you can spray it and it has no effect on the body. Uh, it's completely the opposite. It's the, it's the Tesla type of situation to cars where everything's been synthetic and chemical and toxic. And like all our products, this is completely natural and organic. The premium is safety, but it also is the strongest to kill the COVID virus globally of any toxic chemical product. So a significant opportunity for the company, which is now being tackled in the commercialization phase. Um, next slide, please. To emphasize the point in a, in a visual center, if you look at the screen, you'll see that uh, we scored log seven, which is the scientific grading scale. It's like, it, it's like earthquakes, it's a, it's a log table. If you look at the base of the screen, the log four is the standard product on every supermarket shelf. And it doesn't kill the virus completely. Uh, log fives are very toxic chemicals not used in homes. 
there isn't a product at log six at the moment. And then we jump to skin on super cover at log seven. It's a global opportunity for the market, which we're now pursuing, as I say, and it's a, one of the key aspects with the sunscreen and the pawpaw therapeutic program, the company's now moving to commercialization. Next uh, slide, please. To leverage the super cover program, we brought on Pacific Health Group, which is a 35-year-old uh, a distributor for health and cleaning products particularly, and it deals with a number of key clients. Um, we're in the process of getting our products now, and they have been for the last few months, uh, accepted and accredited as products to be used on these very, very stringent tenders, which have previously been all the domain of the very strong chemicals. So the opportunity for the company is to suddenly see large corporate groups accessing this for general cleaning, particularly through hospitals, schools, and, and office buildings across the nation, and, and a global sense as well. Next slide, please. The company has spent over 15 years in developing these products. So as compared to the previous presentation, which is a looking for the right minerals, and I'm sure they'll find them. Um, we started that process 15 years ago in a biotech sense, and we have spent that period getting the products built and put in place through thorough testing and assessment and accreditation. And essentially, um, as I say, prior to COVID, we're about to launch our first of the ranges post COVID, we now have got the three products complete and ready to be launched. Next slide, please. Um, my background, just for the benefit of the viewers, is I've spent uh, over 30 years in entrepreneurial startups. And I have uh, had a very long track record, a successful one in, in many projects. And I see the current Skin Onus program, in fact, uh, probably the best of the programs because of the breadth and depth of the market opportunity. Next slide, please. Uh, we're an AS listed company uh, from the last four years. The share price is three cents, and we have 430 odd million shares on issue, market cap of just under 20 million. And uh, there's the market year high and the year low. Um, and with that, I complete the presentation, Tim. Thanks, Peter. Uh, time for a few questions, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Organic products are generally more expensive than the generic chemical-based uh, products. How do your products compare on pricing? Look, I think the general comment is probably correct. Uh, organic products have been low production, uh, very small market share, have not been part of the persona of the international market to date. And therefore, it's like buying a specialist vehicle in the vehicle market, which has got low production, low volumes, the costs are a lot higher. Um, the, the interesting fact is now, this conscious consumerism affecting the global market has shown that uh, we're, we've got a very, very, very big increase in amount of consumers crossing the border from chemicals to natural organic. And that lends itself to a volume type of proposition instead of very limited production runs. And we've just completed a million dollar production run and in enabling to do those type of volumes, you can really carve the uh, cost structures out of these type of products. So in a practical sense, um, the skin elements products will be able to rank dollar for dollar with equivalent chemical products. And in fact, probably win the day by a long shot over time. I mean, there's certainly a market and there's cert certainly a big market for consumers. You're right. And consumers are focused on these sort of products, particularly chemical free. What's, what's your target market to start with? Is it Australia? And then do you look to bring in place global distribution partners? Correct. And we, we're doing that now. We've got, 
a very big opportunity through Australia with the sunscreen, which you've got two distributors attacking that. Um, we've got global opportunities with the sunscreen now moving to the UK through uh, massive uh, distribution opportunities we're pursuing, which will get us into Europe and the North American markets. And that's where the volumes are. And we certainly will do that. Uh, the up, upside for a, the disinfectant, it, it'll give you a feel for the numbers. It's a $102 billion market within the next three or four years, currently sitting at about $30 billion. It's the, it's the space only, only supported by very, very tough chemicals, which can't be sprayed or cleaned in rooms around people. You need to do these deep cleans after hours in places where people don't exist. We can do a deep clean and kill a virus while we're sitting in the room. So the upshot is it's a completely different opportunity, but the market is global and it's huge. And the distribution will be done with third parties, which we're talking to at the moment, a number of parties we're speaking within the Australian market at the moment and also the international markets. And, and just quickly, we've got to wrap up, but what, what are those international markets? Is, is, is China potentially a market there? I mean, they do like, you know, this uh, Australian-based organic product. Look, I think uh, the Chinese market has its own issues. I think everybody is aware of that. There's, a, there's the issues with just we've seen in Western Australia, the, the massive rebuff to all the exports and cancel contract, yep. and that is concerning that the rule of law doesn't apply the way it does in Australia. Um, and separately, uh, China doesn't necessarily have the security of, of uh, control over products that are made or distributed there. And uh, really, I think the global market is so significant. We've got lower hanging fruit in a sense, the Western markets of Europe and North America to tackle first. I'm not ruling out China, but I just think it has its own intrinsic problems at the moment to tackle. Yeah, understood, Peter. Um, that's all we have time for. Really appreciate your time today. We'll follow up again later in the year. Have a nice weekend. Thanks very much, Tim. Great to be here. Thank you.